Hello, everyone. I'm Julio Martinez, co-founder and CEO of Abacom. It's a blast to be here. OK. There we go. Hey, very quickly about myself. I launched four fintech products to market from scratch, and honestly, many others that didn't work. I've spent too much time in investment banking, and I'm looking for redemption. And I'm seeing some horns in the audience as well here, maybe former consultants or something. I'm a three times father, and you know, my kids keep me busy and very happy. And finally, my biggest accomplishment, I'm a pro paella cook. So if you want to get some tips, come me, grab me later. Quickly on Abacom, we are the leading mid-market financial planning and analysis solution. We help finance teams drive performance with having all the operational KPIs from all business systems in one single place. And we make reporting, forecasting, and one-click scenarios feel like a breeze. We are headquartered in New York, um, where I'm based. And we have operations in London and Barcelona, where I'm from, as you can tell by my thick accent. Good. Why am I here giving this talk on making early hires? Right? What, what, what are my credentials, really? And hey, you need to know something, right? I fucked up a lot, many times, all over the place, right? From C levels, VPs, mid management, heads of junior people across product, technology, sales, marketing. So, you know, it's very embarrassing, actually. And uh, during that journey, I've learned a few lessons. So, what I'm planning to do today is to share very tactical, actionable, pragmatic stuff that hopefully is helpful for those making early hires. Let me go back a sec, because all these people were actually very smart. So something I want to say is that, you know, I carry a heavy burden, right? I failed in conducting a amazing hiring process to attract the right talent, and actually I failed them in bringing them to success, right? I also want to be clear on that. So that's why, you know, mastering hiring is very important. You, you want to avoid unfair situations and, you know, feeling guilty uh, later on in your journey. Okay, first things first. This is your top priority, right? There are no shortcuts. This is your top priority. You need to put in the work to make this happen, right? I used to spend at least two days per week just hiding. It needs to become, you know, the bulk of your agenda, the bulk of your week, because the stakes are really high. It's very easy to get this wrong, right? Uh, first of all, the caliber of your early talent is going to heavily determine the quality of your next 100 and 200 people in the company. Second, your investors, your customers are actually ju judging you for your capacity to attract talent. And then finally, in early stage, frankly, you don't know much yet, right? So uncertainty is very high, and it's difficult to understand what talent you need. So you need to put the hours, you need to put the intention, you need to be very uh, mindful about your hiring process. Good. We're going to be covering three main topics. Who to hire, how do you hire them, and then, hey, once on board, what do you actually do? Let's move on. Who to hire, right? Who, who do you want to hire? Hey, in startups, it feels easy. You build stuff, you sell stuff, right? That, that's it. When it comes to product hires, engineering, design, and then product. We got this very right. Our first engineering team, our first five hires were engineers, and then our first 15 out of 20 were also engineers. And they, they are a mind-blowing team out of this world. So we were very lucky there. What did we do right? We went for very senior people. 
like 15, 20 years, if possible, of experience. People that have been there and done that. So don't compromise on seniority, that's really important. Second, you want to go for very pragmatic and business-oriented engineers. And you can prove for that in the interview process, right? If the questions they ask is, hey, do I get to build an hexagonal architecture here? You know, what about your microservices? Wrong, right? So the questions that you need to be hearing is, am I really gonna solve a real customer problem? The code I commit, you know, what's the impact that this is really having? Right? This is a business mindset that you need your engineering team to have, especially in early stage. When it comes to design, we were very fortunate here. We got a first stellar designer, probably the smartest person I know, and it's been transformational. I think, arguably, at the beginning, you can outsource design for some time. Eventually, you will be paying the price. In this market, I bet everybody has at least five to 10 competitors, right? Use design as your competitive advantage. Build in-house an amazing experience. So the type of designer that you need to get on board is interaction. Go very deep on interaction, as opposed to brand, visuals, research. You know, all that is good. You can outsource that. Get on board an amazing interactive designer that builds an amazing experience for your product. Like, that was a key success factor for us. And then when it comes to product, right? Hey, many companies out there don't believe in product management, right? So, and they're very successful or they bring PMs very late in their journey, like Stripe or Linear or many others. That's all right. I, I've seen PMs having a huge impact in our business. And, you know, I'm a big believer in having strong PMs. The only thing that matters here is to get them right. And hey, many PMs will focus more on maybe frameworks and buzzwords and theories instead of obsessing about becoming the person that knows the customer the most in your company, right? You need to get those PMs. You need to prove for that. How often do you talk to customers? Is that daily? How do you derive insights? That's critical, right? No frameworks, no Lenny newsletter. That's all fine. But hey, are you obsessed with the customer? Do you know your customer better than the founder? When it comes to managing PMs, actually, you can bring, you can bring a head of product as well. Uh, you know, I would suggest that you stick with managing PMs for as long as you can as a founder, you know, very close to that product building. And I didn't do that for some time and, you know, I've regretted. Okay, how do you nail your distribution? How do you nail go to market? Two types of hires here, growth and of course your closing capabilities. When it comes to growth, okay, this is somebody that loves to experiment every day, all day, right? Also, something I've learned is that a whatever it takes attitude matters a lot. So this is people that are extremely driven. So former bankers and consultants uh, tend to work very well here and that are willing to go through that wall to deliver your pipeline or ARR metric. And they don't care, right? Maybe it's fixing HubSpot. Maybe it's building a cold sequence. Maybe it's uh, launching an event, Google, LinkedIn campaigns, whatever. They are not optimizers, right? They, they are not going to be scaling the business for you, right? But this is as opposed to design, which is very interaction, so very core. These guys are four wheelers and really can cover a lot of ground when it comes to delivering growth and pipeline. Closing. You need people closing business, right? Account executives. I think there is an argument about having a full cycle, two full cycle, you always want two, right, to, to, to make them compete two full cycle account executives that move from sourcing deals and building pipeline all the way to signature. Full cycle is you know, more efficient when it comes to resources and you know, usually in early stage it can work. If you have a complex product, like we do, right? So we sell to sophisticated CFOs, sophisticated VP finances, we have a technical conversation, our product, you know, there is a high degree of complexity, right? So probably you need some degree of specialization. And that's why for us, it worked better to have initially two, three BDRs, than two account executives, right? So you can specialize those roles and, you know, have account executives go deeper into the technical. Later on in your journey, of course, you might want to have sales engineers, solution architects, you know, to get more technical, which is what we've built now. But at the beginning, you know, 
this is how you close deals, basically. OK. So who are these people? What is the common denominator? Those early hires are mad lovers. Right? This is people that enjoy staying in the dirt, like this guy, right, smiling there. They love to build from scratch. Look, that also means that this is people that are excited about taking showers of shit, just like you as a founder, right? And therefore, some amazing talent is either former founders or people that want to become a founder and that really are using working with you as a stepping stone into their own journey, right? But hey, also something that I've learned is that in the, in the interview process, everybody feels they can build from scratch. Everybody feels, I can do this, I'm a builder from scratch, no problem, I got this. You know what, you know, we people tend to, to our, um, you know, misunderstand what we really want in life, uh, oftentimes, and, and hey, it's very difficult to live in the mat day in, day out for many months, right? So in the interview process, you, you need to do a very good job in understanding their true intentions and if they are capable of doing that. And you, you will need to get very close to a rectal examination. Like it, it's, it's very difficult. They are not lying to you. They honestly believe they can do it, but then they can't. And that's an issue. OK. They also need to be generalists, right? Uh, in general, you, you want to have people that eat problems of any kind for breakfast. And second, focus on getting your next 12 to 18 months right. Everybody gets super excited about, you know, you know this candidate, it's amazing, you know, we can, we can grow with him for three to five years and, you know, all, all, this, all this amazing stuff. Well, your job is really to get 12 to 18 months right, right? And then during that time, you will judge if this talent can bring you to the next step. Obviously, take, take seniority into account and if they have really gone, you know, beyond certain points, but really focus on, on your 12 to 18 months. Good. Moving on. We know who to hire. How do we hire these early people? Well, first of all, you have to be extremely rigorous and disciplined about your hiring process. So this is all about managing your hiring process like a go-to-market funnel, like your marketing and sales funnel. First of all, get your operations right. You need to be very strict in defining the steps in the funnel. Who is taking care of each step? What are you proving in each one? What exactly you need to see in the candidate in every step so that they move on? Where are they dropping? Why are they dropping? It's very important to get these operations right. There is plenty of literature out there. It's operations, but really this will increase your chances of avoiding mistakes. Then the big question, arguably more important even, is you know, how do you fill up the funnel <laughs> with uh, world-class talent, right? So you now I'm starting my company and now you know, wh where do I start? Well, something that worked for us uh, was really go for, you know, we, we went for a coffee overdose, basically, right? So you, you, you go out there and then you start buying coffee and talking to everybody you know in the ecosystem, literally. And it's not only that, actually what we did is I tried to recruit everybody, even if I had no conviction, right? I just wanted to flex those muscles. I just wanted to get excitement to, uh, from people to, to build that momentum. And then people will feel flattered, right? And then some of them will actually join you in that funnel. So then you start you know, running the machine and then some others out of that excitement will open their network to you. So you don't finish any of those coffees without two or three referrals that are actionable, and then you keep the ball rolling. So referrals is also critical. Reach out to your network, build excitement, and then either you know, they come and join you in the funnel, or they sell your vision on your behalf to their friends. Of course, there are other uh, accelerators here. So Y Combinator uh, was instrumental to us. Uh, it's a very strong brand for early stage. Uh, any other fundraising um, can, can also, you know, fundraising can also establish the credibility for your company, so that's helpful. And then, of course, advisors, right? Advisors, um, I know you might be thinking, well, you know, but Julio, advisors are totally overrated, right? So you, you, you lift a stone and there are 20 advisors, uh, uh, you know, 
and, and it's probably true, right? But, but there is something here. The truth is that the one you get right can be extremely transformational to your company. So if, if you find the right people, they can be amazing. And actually, in our case, for instance, that amazing early engineering team that we hired that you know, are humbling me still today every day, they came through an advisor, right? So you know, uh, it, it was uh, amazing for us. Good, some more tactical, some more tactical um, lessons I've learned. Whenever there is any doubt, there is no doubt, right? You need to feel the inner excitement. You need to have that strong gut feeling. It's black or white. You have to be in high conviction. Don't cheat yourself. I did it, right? So you cheat yourself, right? You know, uh, no doubt, but there is a doubt, and, and then you fuck up, right? So no doubt is no doubt. Something that will help you to do that is understand what great looks like. I go very well prepared to these meetings with amazing operators. Like, you know, you reach out to different people and meet with them. You will learn a lot. Go there well prepared with your business problems. And then you bring that intel back and then triangulate and calibrate better your candidates. It's very important that you spend as much time hiring people than talking to amazing people so you understand what you really need. When it comes to the process, right? Everybody still does um, 30, 60, 90 day plans. We, we actually did a lot of them, only to learn that they are mostly useless, right? What you, want to, what you want to understand is, hey, do they think like an owner? In early stage, that's very important. You know, are they gonna be challenging me, challenging me as a CEO because they disagree? Do they own their mistakes? Do they, do they really feel ownership about the destiny of the company? That's very important. Are, are they a talent magnet? I've seen my best players like assembling a world-class team in one month, two months, and then all of a sudden like that magic happens. A players are a magnet and bring amazing talent to join your company. That, that's the best thing that can happen. So try to prove for that stuff, right? In the interview process, okay, who, who, who is joining you now? So, you know, imagine you join this company, give me five names, right? Who, who are you bringing on board? Be very clear and, 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 and specific about it. And then finally, write down your ways of working. That's just a user guide of what, what it feels like w w working with you, right? That means you know, your accountability, how you think of performance, your rituals, your obsessions, <clears throat> how, you, how you drive performance. That's important, of course, that you share with your teammates so you have a lot of clarity, but also share with candidates. And you will be surprised. Right? Some people will get very excited about your madness and, and how you like to work, and some other people will feel, okay, you know, maybe I just need to drop now. And then you, know, you, you have provided a lot of clarity already. Good. You know the drill here. The drill is always be fundraising, always be selling, always be hiding. Right? A few more tactical stuff. Be intentional. You, may, you, you are able to provide a very involving experience to your candidates. That essentially means bring them on board, bring them one or two days to your company, pay for that if needed, of course, uh, to work with you, to discuss, to whiteboard, right? Spend time with them to see if there is a match. Second, be very fast. Be aggressive, actually. As a startup, you can add maneuver bigger companies that will take more time. So be very fast, be very aggressive, and that's also helpful for you because if the candidate takes too long in giving you an answer, that's very clearly a red flag for you, right? That you can address up from with the candidate. Yeah, man, I need to see the spark in your eyes. You are about to, to embark into, into a very muddy journey. Like, you know, you need to be ready. So, you know, you, you, you need to have a very fast answer from candidates. Otherwise, uh, have a conversation. And then finally, be competitive, right? Uh, keep calm, very simple at the beginning. You need to understand from both salary and ESOP, just the numbers. What's market in early stage? What's market in later stage? And then what's market internally? Basically, how much they are paying um, in salary and ESOP comparable companies, like in early stage, in later stage, and internally that means how much are you really paying? You want to avoid creating unfair situations in the company and a lot of gap between some of your early hires and then your next hires. And, you know, first of all, because you want to be fair to, to your people. And secondly, because, you know, you want to be smart. 
people talk over coffee, right? So uh, be, be practical about it. Okay, so they joined. You convince them, you close the comp, everything is working, and you know, they join your company. So now, what do you need to do? Maybe you're feeling like I felt at some point, oh, you know, we just uh, hired this hot shot. It feels like you, you're having Frank Slotman joining your company and you are so, you know, we, I'm gonna build the best relationship, I want to avoid unnecessary tensions at the beginning, you know, like I'm gonna you know, b build the right culture, I'm gonna take it easy, right? And well, that's, that's just wrong, right? What I've learned is that your job is to have performance-based relationships in the company, right? So maybe you want to have the right culture and have fun along the way and make it enjoyable. That's all fine, you know, don't get me wrong. But the nature of your relationships with everybody in the company needs to be performance. And you have to be pretty brutal about it. Best players want to be empowered. They want to be owners. They want to be accountable. So be sure that during even the hiding process, but actually the first day, you address the metrics that matter, the objectives, your expectations, the milestones with deadlines. Get ready to have uncomfortable, difficult conversations in your first week. Your first 101, right? The first 101 that is a welcoming coffee and it's chit chat. Okay, fine, but jump into the math, right? Go into the details. Th these are my expectations, these are your objectives, these are your metrics. You need to flex those muscles and build performance at the core of the company. Hey, don't buy the, um, you know, it's my first quarter, uh, I'm learning, I'm ramping. Fine, you know, everybody will say that, it's natural. But the best way of learning is actually by doing. The best way of learning is actually by delivering results. Right? There is always low-hanging fruit to execute on. So on your first 101, you go and agree on some quick wins, right? Quick wins where you're gonna be executing and delivering. And maybe there are some other complex topics where you know you, 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 they, they will need to learn more. But you get shit done from day one, right? And this is very important, especially in early stage. Good. Hey, what's the most unfollowed founder advice? You know, I would love to, to ask you guys, um, you know, any, any ideas? Well, my opinion, my opinion is I've been following amazing founders like you guys for, for a long time and, you know, iconic founders and they are interviewed uh, neatly in the stage and, you know, um, what did you do wrong, right? Or what was your biggest mistake? And they all get like, uh, they think about it. Um, I wish I had fired fast enough, right? And, and, and you know, this seems to be a classic, right? This seems to be a cliche almost. Like everybody's saying that. And still we founders continue making the same mistake. At least I did, right? So uh, it's embarrassing. I've had underperforming people in seed for a year. And you always have excuses, right? You, you, know, you are in another fight in the business. You feel responsible. You want to make it work, right? Whatever, it's never a clean cut, right? And mistake, right? That is really demoralizing your best players. You don't, you know, nobody wants to deal with underperforming people. And actually, this is very bad for your teammate as well, right? They are struggling, they are under pressure, they are in pain, they realize they are not a good fit, and they keep on trying, and you keep on pushing. You know, it, it's just a very hurtful situation, right? So I think it's better to be bold, to address that up front, be clean, be amicable, treat people the right way, but everybody's better off, both sides. Good. It's time to start wrapping up. So I'm gonna go with my top three learnings uh, and, and hopefully, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's a, small, a small recap from what we've seen. Hey, referrals are your best hires, of course. A players attract A players, not only from advisors and your friends, but actually from your employees. So make sure you put in place an, an um, aggressive incentive program so pay money to your people for, for their introductions of their good friends, right? A players will extend their own credibility to your company and they will be a talent magnet. Compensate people for that. 
second. Let's be honest, no matter what you do, you know, we, you will screw up, right, probably, so, you know, be ready for that, be prepared for that, have those performance conversations we've discussed early on, and be ready to fail, be ready to move very fast, that's critical, it will happen, so, you know, uh, tackle that up front. And then finally, do not hire, right, do not hire. I feel most of us here are venture-backed companies, right? And, and hey, first of all, probably we were not smart enough to bootstrap our own business. And we have some level of pressure to you know, grow um, and hire. And I don't know what's wrong, but I feel hiring feels cool. And people ask questions about, you know, how many employees are you? Like a measure of success. But I think we all can be smarter than that and really focus on the ROI that the next hire will bring and really focus on the fundamentals of the business and decouple ourselves from you know, the hype of more employees and stuff. And that's it. I really appreciate your time. Uh, there is a Q&A session, so if you want to learn some pro paella tips or more stuff about early hiring, let me know. And thank you so much for your time and to Slash. Good luck, everyone. Thank you.